Hi, I'm Steve. Uh, today, this will be my first video, and I'll be uh, showing you around the shop and showing you my project. It's a Zenith CH701 aircraft I'm building here in the shop. And today I have a, a problem with the engine alignment, and I'm hoping uh, some of you folks out there with knowledge can help me figure out. So if you'll come over here and take a look. Here's the drawings. Uh, this is what I'm building right here, a CH-701. If you'll pan this way, you'll see here's the aircraft I'm building. And I want to bring your attention to this drawing right here in particular. And if you can see, it says the level reference line of the aircraft is uh, the upper deck of the rear fuselage all the way between the two wing attach fittings. Here should be a, a straight level reference line. And if you notice, the firewall here is... 80 degrees from this lower floor surface plus uh, 7 degrees off of level uh, which should cant the firewall back at a 17 degree angle okay <clears throat> so I'll get right into the problem here's my angle cube come on around here please <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to put the angle cube on the level reference line of the aircraft and zero it. Okay, now it's on zero. And I can also demonstrate that back here it remains zero. Make sure I'm not sitting on any rivets. There we go, zero. Okay, now if I come up here and I hold this on the firewall of the aircraft, what we'll see. Well, actually, we were seeing 18 earlier. We're seeing 16.4. It should be about 17 degrees, according to the drawings. Let me try here. Okay, I'm seeing 18 degrees down here. All right. Now, I've installed the mount, and I've installed the engine. And after uh, much struggle, I've got the engine angled down a half a degree. My instructions are telling me the engine should be between zero and one degree nose down. So if you can see I tilt it up, it goes to zero, tilt it down. I got almost a degree, half a degree. The problem that I'm having is in order to achieve that, I've had to install additional spacers, washers here on the upper lord mounts. And I've had to install these spacers here and move the mount, the upper mount brackets, away from the firewall. I also had to install spacers here, right under this mount. Come in from right here, you can see it probably better. There you go, right up in there, you can see the spacers. <clears throat> so, my question is uh, this affects the uh, load path from this mount to my upper f cabin frame structure is this an acceptable um, method of connecting these or should I get another mount it seems that my firewall is in approximately the correct position uh, but my my mount is leaning my engine up at with no spacers in it and the mount secured to the firewall the engine rests at 3.5 degree nose high attitude, which is uh, not what I need. And I want to show the brackets that I built. Shine it in here. And you can see where I've built these doubler brackets. They're you know attached to the... Good out there at 8 degree. Uh, it ain't no 8 degrees. All right. And there's the other bracket over there. Can you see that one? Mm. So I've, the, the countersunk screws are through the belly longerons and then the in, lower engine mount bolts are these quarter inch heads that I've got here. <laughs> so that's the problem. <clears throat> the engine mount without the spacers wants to angle the engine up. Are these spacers acceptable or should I build a whole new mount or get a whole new mount? or perhaps someone knows something more about the firewall placement and I've got that done incorrectly uh, having trouble believing that though because this cabin frame structure 
uh, is a fixed length structure and I, I, you know, it, it had to go right there and the firewall had to go against it and then all the other dimensions that I used when I installed the bottom of the firewall were per the drawings you can see that I've solid riveted most of the forward fuselage structure here <coughs> now is probably a good time to show off my instrument panel as well I've got the battery connected to the power supply <coughs> here I got a Dynon D180 it's going to be my uh, primary flight instrument I've got uh, my iPad installed in the instrument panel and it's going to be my uh, secondary navigation instrument I've got a Garmin SL30 that goes here for my primary nav and uh, a King KT76 transponder that goes here my two engine switches, engine starter switch, alternator switch, uh, master switch, and navigation lights. And this will be strobes. And uh, I'll have a dome light and a spare switch here. My throttle cable is going to go here. I don't have it yet, so I've left the hole undrilled at this time. I've also installed dual sticks in this aircraft instead of the standard uh, single Y stick which uh, I think is going to give me a little more room in the cabin I had to make the sticks removable so for you can cabin access so you can get in and out so they snap right in got push to talk, intercom enable and removable for cabin ingress and egress <laughs> this is my new Viking engine I just got uh, sent to me about a week ago they're excited about uh, hearing that thing purr, but I've got to figure out this mount problem before I do. So that's it for now. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, hope to uh, hope to get some responses from this video. Have a good day.